reveal things to us. He said, he's, matter of fact, he said that he wouldn't do anything unless he first revealed it to his prophets. God tells us what he's going to do. He tells us what he wants to do. He tells us how to do what he wants us to do and how to do what we need to do. But we need to read it. We need to hear it. We need to understand it the way that he has spoken it. Habakkuk 2.4 says, Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Somebody that presumes, one whose soul was lifted up in them, one that bases their actions on their own wisdom and their own knowledge, says they're, they're not right. It's not upright in them. It says, but the just shall live by his faith. The word faith is translated there means firmness. The just shall live. That's what Habakkuk was saying. Not going to live by his understanding, his application, but the just shall live by his firmness, by taking his stance, if you will. Romans 1.17 says, Behold his soul, or, I mean, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That's the one we use more often. That's a verse we quote more often. And we talk about that and we say, well, the just will live by their faith. You've got to believe this. You've got to trust God for this. You've got to believe that. You know, where you, you, you lay hands on somebody, you lay hands believing. You lay hands in faith that they're going to be healed. When you ask God to uh, you know, provide money to pay the electric bill, then you, you believe God's going to do that. That's faith. That's faith. You've got to exercise that faith. The word that's ex- used there, now listen, listen to this. The word that's used there in Romans it says it's righteousness of God's revealed from faith to faith. That word translated is from belief to belief. It's a word in the Greek called, it says, uh, it's called, I think believe is the right way to pronounce it, pistis. A credence, a moral conviction. Particularly reliance upon Christ for wisdom, for salvation. And that's the main thing. The main emphasis of that word that's translated belief there, that main word, pistis, has that we are to rely upon Christ for salvation. By extension, then, we call it our belief. God's righteousness, it's known from teaching to teaching. Sermon to sermon, lesson to lesson, experience to experience. Our reliance upon God, our belief grows. And it's what keeps us going. It's what keeps us alive in Christ. That righteousness of God being revealed from faith to faith. Belief to belief. Teaching to teaching. All the, that's what keeps us going physically. That's what keeps us going spiritually. That it's being revealed to us. It's more than a simple definition of Hebrews 11. One, you know, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. We use that a whole lot to define what faith is. And generally when we're talking about faith, that's what we think of and what we, we reference that type of faith. But it's not just something that we use to get something from God. Faith is, is more than that. It goes beyond that. And, and it's something that isn't often taught in the ter- church. And, and a lot of people don't realize, and I didn't realize the the connection with belief, even until I got into this message and got in studying it today. How that faith works as belief. Jesus said we'd be hated of all people. Matthew 10, he had a whole list of things saying that we'd be persecuted. You know, men would think that it'd be a service when they'd kill us. Members of our, our families would kill other members of family for the sake of the gospel. And said, so you be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. There's a mouthful in that. He that endureth to the end. You endure. You see, because uh, like I said in the title of the message, there's more to faith than what we teach, more to faith than what we think. It's more than just, God, I believe you're going to give this to me. It's more than just, Here's something I, I'm hoping for, I'm needing, I'm, I'm looking to God, and 
Well, I, I, choose, I choose to see evidence that it's here even though there isn't any visible evidence. I choose to, re to re see that. Faith isn't just that gimme, gimme, gimme. You practice it every day. Every day you walk with Christ. Every day you put into effect some word out of, out, out of the gospel, out of the Old Testament, out of Psalms, out of Proverbs. Every day that you take a stand, every day that you look to God, every day that you pray, every day you say something to Him, every day that you look on His promises, you're putting belief in action. Belief. You're putting pistis in action. You're putting that word, faith. The word belief and the word faith both have that same root in the Greek. They both come from the same root word. It's keeping you alive. And there's, a, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks this morning when I read that. Jesus said, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. That's not just talking about, well, if you can put up with persecution, yeah, if you can put up with a, a, you know, a born Sunday school preacher or, or teacher or maybe a lousy preacher or something like that, if you can put up with that and just hang in there, Everybody's giving you a hard time about being a Christian. Just hang in there. Hold on. Hold on. Grab the grab that pew and hang on to it till you get to heaven. No. 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 Put that belief. Live by faith. Live by that daily, every day, just that faith, that belief, that works, that keeps you alive, that keeps you going. This is God's got this. God's got this. It's not just I need something from God, but God's got it. God's going to see me through. Oh, everything's falling apart around me. But praise God, God's got a plan. That's faith. That's belief. Oh, uh, my foot swelled up. My foot swelled up. Yeah, it hurts. But you know what? By his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. Going on with God. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. I'm going to ask you this tonight. Just ask yourself, are you saved? Are you saved? Do you have that salvation of God? It's not just a, a formula of salvation when uh, Paul and Silas were asked the question, what do I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That word believe that they use right there is not pistis, but it's pistule. Pistule. Another same form of the Greek root we were talking about earlier referring to belief referring to faith they were telling the people the same thing that Habakkuk was saying the same thing that's said in the New Testament in many different places the just shall live by faith Paul and Silas were telling the people you're saved that same way you're saved by belief that belief that faith comes from the same root. We just translate it a little different in our English. Living for God. Continue on in the face of disappointment, failures, hurts, going on every day, starting over when we fall, and, and not, not giving up. That's true living by faith. Not just name it and claim it stuff. Don't get me wrong. Now, I, <laughs> there, there's something to name it and claim it, but there, it goes farther than just those two things. You don't just say, I got this, it's mine, I believe it, and, and the, the, but that's a whole, a whole other thing too. But faith goes farther than that. True living by our belief, truly living by it, that's faith. This is faith in Christ. To be honest with you, I don't know exactly how to wrap this up. Because when I was writing down the notes and getting all this from the Lord, I was excited about it. You know. I found out in the years of preaching, though, a lot of times when you know you got one of the messages that say, "Glory to God, I'm happy about this." Oh, the Lord's really talking to me about this. Oh, hallelujah! And you get to the congregation. Nine times out of ten, that's going to be the the message that the congregation sits there. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> But that's because the devil doesn't want the message to get across. And when I was getting this from the Lord, and I got, you know, got down to this part and this end part and this revelation about belief and faith basically being the same and walking and keeping us alive and walking in it is, is what keeps us alive and believing in, and having that faith keeps us going. Lord, God, I got excited. I didn't think anything about, well, okay, where do you go from here? <laughs> God, God didn't say, have an altar call now. 
God didn't say give it. See if anybody there needs to be saved. But I'll tell you what. That message needs to be received. And if you've received that message tonight, I want to encourage you. Walk it. Walk it out. Don't let anybody put you down. Don't let anybody make you feel bad or feel guilty for what you believe, for what you do. You come to church on a Wednesday night when they wanted you maybe to go to a birthday party and say, well, I can't, we got church tonight. Nothing wrong with birthday parties, you know, but just throw that as an example. Telling somebody you can't come over to their house on Sunday evening because they want you to come over at the same time you have church. And, well... You don't want to tell them that. I mean, you're going to hurt their feelings and they go, you make them feel bad. And, or maybe they come up with some talk, smack against you. Why are you one of them holier than thou people? You know? I mean, there's a whole gambit of things that come against us every day, come up to make us feel bad. People try to make us feel bad. But at the base of it, the devil's trying to make us feel bad. The devil's trying to keep us from putting that faith in action. The devil's trying to keep us from exercising belief. I want to encourage you. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever is coming up, and whatever is you're, you're, you're facing, rest assured, you make the, the choice, you make the decision to walk by faith. That decision is going to be like be like eating food. That decision is going to keep you going. A decision to give in and do whatever the alternative is is not going to help you a bit. It's not going to help you grow. It's not going to help you stand strong. It's not going to help you with your convictions. It's not going to help you to know in your heart that firmness, that faith firmness is well placed. Would you stand with me tonight? Lord, you've given us you've given us your word, you've given us a word, you've given us direction and you've told us in your word that to just to live by faith. And you've told us also that every man's been given the measure of faith. There's not a man, woman, or child on the face of this earth that doesn't have faith. And that's more evident now than it ever was that the reason you gave us faith was not just so that we might be saved, but so that we might live, so that we might continue, so that we might grow. Lord, I ask you to take your word tonight, God, and encourage each, each of my brothers and sisters here tonight encourage them in their everyday life show them Lord how to put that, that belief in, into action in a way that they hadn't thought of before show them God how even the things that they've been, been doing and, and taken for granted to stand for you have been contributing to their life to their strength to their growth Father I ask you pour out a fresh anointing God upon your people I know people ask you that all the time. But I'm not asking to just God do some frilly thing that we want. But I'm asking you, Lord, to pour out that fresh anointing, God, to exercise faith. To walk in faith. To exercise belief. To exercise our firmness, God, in the things, standing firm in the things that you told us to do. Just like you said about putting on the armor of God, that when we put it on, we've done all we could do to stand. Once we've done all that is possible for us to stand and we put it on, then stand. Help them, God, see that stance that they need to take, that they can take, and have the confidence to do so, knowing it's your will, it's your direction. Before we unhook, dismiss, whatever you want to call it tonight, I want to ask you, is there anybody, you've got a, a, you've got a need or a desire or something to you, you don't, want, don't, don't need to leave here without it being prayed for, without all of us gathering together with you and putting our belief to work, putting our faith to work, seeing that 